Well, we're going to continue rolling out our uh, um, K through 12 broadband network. It's over five year. It's going to be a five year process. We're going to complete it sometime here in the next uh, 18 months, but total it's 65 million dollars. So that's a big project for us. So we're in the the legislature passed an open data transparency initiative, and uh, I serve on the board of that as well. So we're beginning. We're going down the path of moving towards open data and seeing what we can and can't share and then we're going to eventually provide tools that allow the citizens to be to do their own data mining and figure out what they can learn about government maybe teach us something. Well we're investigating we're looking at the North Carolina GDAC uh, options and we're going to talk to Indiana and, and Michigan as well we're having a conversation about what are the things we want to do looking for the business case what are the first low-hanging fruit things? And we know that uh, for us, Medicaid fraud is one of the things we know is a low-hanging fruit. We know it's out there, we know it exists. And we know the analytical tools exist today. So after we chase some of those type things, unemployment, insurance fraud, then we begin, we'll try and transform and be much more, well, what can we do if we just put a whole lot of structured and unstructured data into a pool and begin to mine it and see what pops up. So it's a, probably a 12-month vision, but it's not a tomorrow vision. Well, I got very fortunate, the state got very fortunate, I should say, and the governor dedicated $6 million for security upgrades across the network. And we're slowly rolling those out. It's part of the, we're doing, obviously it's part of the K-12 through network, or, so our public schools are gonna benefit from that, but then our agencies are gonna benefit from that. Uh, we've gone with a, a private partner to help uh, roll out some of the technology, but we're working hand in hand with them every day to uh, add in new capabilities, do new data mining, who's on the network, what are they doing, oh, and then blocking phishing attempts. And we block 400,000 spam emails every day, and about a fourth of those are phishing attempts, but mass phishing attempts. Of course, then the question about spear phishing comes up that we're going to have how's that working, and uh, we've got an education process left to do. So that'd be, a one, that'd be one of two things, I'd say, from a security standpoint, that uh, left on my plate to accomplish is education. The way we are lowering uh, the cost of government is doing a procurement reviews and to make sure that we're not we're re-leveraging assets because if one department has a tool, why can't another department have it? And you know, that's the advantage of being the state CTO. I do understand, know, have the ability to see what everyone's doing. Now today, uh, the state of Arkansas, the governor requires that every IT purchase over $100,000 that I personally sign off on. And to date, we've saved uh, over $1.2 million in saying, oh, we already have that available, you shouldn't buy that. Or in the case of, uh, uh, and that's just in software costs alone, and we have some hardware costs, just under half a million dollars worth of hard, uh, hardware costs that we said, oh, that already exists at your sister agency. You should use it because they have capacity. So we're finding those economies of scale that weren't being maximized, now we're trying to maximize them to lower cost and move to the future. Well, I think it's uh, two things. One, and I'm going to talk about this in one of my panels uh, tomorrow, but um, the workforce expects to be a much more di digital oriented workforce. And so there are things, tools that they expect to have available to them that perhaps government hasn't always been uh, adapted providing to them. And so we as a state, and, and it's true across the entire public sector, has to begin to think about how we're digitally enabling our workforce. Then the second, of course, right, is as you do development, you need to move to a development that's citizen-centric versus government-centric. And so as we develop new mobile apps, we begin to think, what would the citizen get out of this? What is their use case? As opposed to what would make our lives easier? <laughs>